guys, Jay here. Welcome to Models Memories Weekly, episode 64. Models Memories is a show about nothing and is filmed in front of a live studio audience. This is a show where I talk about my painting, modeling, and wargaming experiences from the week. Now you might think to yourself, Jay, you put out three interviews a week and you stream every single night. How? Could I possibly have more to say? Well, I do. And here goes. This week, I got a fair amount of painting done, all live on camera. By the way, we live stream every single night from 9 to 10 p.m. Central. Come hang out. But I have been trying out oils. I really want to get good with oils. I hear nothing but good things about oils. Oils, oils, oils. They're better. They're faster. They're more vibrant. Everything about oils is better. Oil paint leaves acrylic paint in the dust. So I'm like, okay, I must learn this skill because I want to improve. I want to be able to paint better, faster, I need this skill. And so I am painting up my new Malifaux team. These are the Nekima Nephilim, or Nekima is the leader and the, the gang is called the Nephilim. It's a core box and one expansion and it's been going pretty good. It's my first time really painting like this with oil. So it's gonna be a slow, laborious process as I learn what I'm doing, but I think it's going pretty well. Some things that I think I've learned about oil though is it's not easy. The thing about oil paints is it's a whole new style of painting. Instead of like normal acrylics, you lay down a brush stroke, it dries pretty much instantaneously, and then you lay down more brush strokes next to it. With oil, you lay on paint, it's wet. You lay another bit of paint down, it's still wet, and then you can blend the two together. And so it's, you have more options, but I think it still takes a lot of skill to really get things exactly how you want them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been pretty successful with this team. Uh, every single time I paint a Malifaux team, I want it to be perfect. I want it to be the best thing I've ever painted. My previous Malifaux team, the Malifaux Showgirl Performers, are the best thing I've ever painted, and so I want this to also be the best thing I've ever painted, and when I get more Malifaux minis, they're also gonna be the best thing I've ever painted. But I'm, I'm pretty happy. Uh, I do think, though, that oils Oils are gonna become like a tool. Like if I want something like a blend in an easy spot, I think oils are gonna be the solution, but maybe layering up small things like muscles is not gonna be the thing that I use oils on because I found that these wings were super easy and effective with oils, laying down color, blending, doing passes. But then on the skin, I'm just putting a dot and a dot and then just giving them a tiny little wipey to get those two to blend together. So I still have a long way to go. I've painted thousands of miniatures using acrylics and I've painted like eight minis using oils. So I'm gonna have to get, I'm gonna have to get the reps in before I really know what I'm doing with oils, but it's a, a good learning experience and I'm pretty happy. Pretty soon I'll have two Malifaux teams and so then it'll become really easy to play Malifaux because I'll have my team and a loner team Oh, Malfo is such a fun game. I love the cards. I love taking them out and just putting them down. It's it, it doesn't use dice. It uses playing cards, standard 52 deck of cards. And it's really interesting because you can essentially modify your dice results or modify your card results. Because if you play a 10 and you win the combat, but your opponent gets to react and they ha and you each have a hand of cards. And so you kind of have to almost like kind of bluff. You're like, OK, I put down my 10, but I have, I have an ace, but is he gonna be willing to play his ace to beat it? Or should I have, should I bump my card up to make sure that it goes through? It's a really, really fun back and forth game, Malifo. So Malifo, oils, Nephilim, enjoying myself. It's hard. <laughs> it's a whole new skill, but it's great. And also, I also wonder, I'm using a combination of really, really nice oil paint, uh, specifically made for miniatures oil paint and cheapy, cheap uh, student grade oil paint. And so we'll see, I'm kind of learning my way through it. The made for miniatures oil paint actually seems to be a lot more satiny. That's the, the some of the red on this guy, whereas the cheapy, cheap student grade oil paint, which is most of the blue on these guys, is very matte. So all the learning process, but anyway, Games Workshop. This week, they released a couple of new things, and let's take a look at those. Introducing the Ironkin Mechanical Members of the Leagues. We got a new squat model, sort of. I mean, it is a squat model. It's squat adjacent, because it is not 
a squat, it's a robot, a true robot, which is kind of rare in 40K. We already know that Kin Society is run by the Votan, ancient thinking machines that the Imperium would be indisputably dubious of if they knew about them. Fortunately, that's not something outsiders need to know about. So the leagues, so the, the Votan, which is the, the robot mind that runs, that helps to run or runs Kin Society, it can make robot minds that they put into these things called the Iron Kin. These are true mechanical intellect created by the Votan, and they're computationally advanced enough that they've learned to mimic kin social behavior, fully integrated into League society as equal partners, whether made from metal or meat, kin are kin. Although, this article leads me to believe that they're not true kin because it says they've learned to mimic kin social behavior, and later on it says that they're like laborers. It, so, do they have all of the, the social ability that true squats have? I'm sorry, the league or the kin? They're not squats, they're kin. Uh, seems weird. It seems a little bit like they're the droids from Star Wars. Like, yeah, sure, they're around, but they're a different, they're a different class. They're not really, they're not, they're not true people, even though they are. <laughs> it's an interesting idea. It'll, Gosh, we really, we need a codex, we need books, we need to know what's going on with the Leagues of Otan. But this model is fine. It's all right. There's nothing really wrong with it, but I don't know. It doesn't, it's not flimming my flams either. And it kind of makes sense. Like it's, it's a robot squat. So it should look just like a squat, but in looking just like a squat, it's not that much fun. Because, you know, a robot could have six six arms or a giant body or mechanical instruments or wheels or like you can get really, really cool with a robot or you can make a robot that looks exactly like a squat, which is what they did, which is is fine. I like his his little uh, apron toolkit. Like I almost want one for painting. I think that'd be fun. You got all your paint brushes and you got, you know, your pouches for snacks like that's really cool. But uh, I don't know. He just looks normal and fine and bland and boring. It looks almost exactly like a Castellan robot from the Adeptus Mechanicus, which is great and boring because it's great because it shows like they're keeping to the design philosophies of 40K. Both of these technologies were created about around the same time, the Castellan and whatever this thing is, the robot kin. And so they should share design elements and aesthetics but on the other hand, it's a little boring to have this robot look exactly like the other robot in 40K. Um, it'd be more interesting to me if it was different, but it is, it's kind of fine as is. It'll be interesting to see because presumably what I would expect to happen is that this is going to be a squad. You can get a squad of robot kin and it's gonna come with 10 robot kin or five robot kin and they're gonna have rules that are separate from the regular squats. But what actually what I think would be kind of cool and would seem to fit more with this lore that they've talked about if they're equal members, it'd be kind of cool if your squad of squats was like half squat, half robot. Like they're literally integrated into kin society and they're the same exact thing. It doesn't matter if you're a squat or a robot, you are kin. That's exactly what the article says, but I would, I would expect that that's not really what's going to happen. The robots are going to be a different thing. It's all fine. I just, I just want, I'm a little bit sick of being drip fed, drip fed the squats. I just want it. I just want them. I just want to be able to look at them. I want to see all the whole army assembled. I want all the lore. I want a nice novel to go along with it. I just want to know about the squats. It's so odd. It's so odd in 40K to not just be able to know what's happening. Because usually there's decades of lore and there's all sorts of books and you can look at the wiki and you can watch YouTube videos, you can hear Baldemort talk about it, but the squats is just, yeah, I mean, he's got an apron, so we'll see what happens. This, this, this is what the squats feel like. It's very odd. But you know what? The squats are boring. Let's look at the brand new Imperial Guard stuff. Astra Militarum alert, new unit sighted, and classic kits reimagined. We have one, two, three, at least three new kits. These got shown off a little bit in a blurry, leaked image. 
It's weird how the leaked images are always exactly the same. Like it's the same kind of a decent photo that almost seems to have had some sort of a blur filter. Like who actually takes a bad photo these days? Who's like, uh, I gotta click the button and then oops, I moved and the photo's blurry now. I know that there's, there's speculation that Games Workshop leaks the images and boy, it's hard to believe that they don't because it would be one thing if every leak had like a different thing going on. Like, oh yeah, that looks like they took it with an iPhone 4. This one looks like it was, you know, a, a flip phone. This one looks like it was taken perfectly with, you know, the new iPhone 13. That one looks like a Samsung Galaxy. That one has got the finger in the, in the, in the shot. Like every photo should look unique to the person who took the photo and leaked it, but they all look exactly the same. Like they had the real image and then they just touched it up a little bit to make it look a little fake. It's interesting. Maybe one day, maybe one day I'll have to do like make an episode about that where I like find all of the leaked photos and then put them in a collage and compare them. I bet I'm onto something. Anyway, but let's look at these new models. First, we got Ursula Creed. Ursula Creed, the Lord Castellan of Cadia, and we dare any of you to tell her that she can't hold the post simply because Abaddon destroyed the entire planet. Creed follows in her father's footsteps, but while nepotism is alive and well in the 41st millennium, this is no hereditary title. She's earned the mantle like her father before her and is every bit as ruthless, tactical, and unflinching. Yeah, so we got Ursula Creed, who, I mean, Creed was no looker. And it seems like she's not a looker either. I mean, she's just like an old lady, which is kind of fun. And she's like, she's wearing the same, the same threads as her father. Wait, could that be her father's battered old great coat? But wasn't he wearing that when Katia fell? Um, could somebody please leave a comment to uh, let me know if did Creed die when the planet Katia exploded? I haven't finished reading the Gathering Storm novel, so I don't really know. But yeah, Ursula looks fine. Uh, it's got a cool scenic base, power sword, Crozius, and uh, a neat little kind of banner planted behind her. It's very neat. Oh, and I like that there's a helmet option. That's really fun. Because I'm sure she's very pragmatic. And so, you know, if, you know, once the missiles start flying, she puts on her helmet for safety. Safety first. Yeah, I think she looks great. Very neat. Next up, the Kazarkin. The new Lord Castellan deserves to command only the finest troops in battle, and whom better than the renowned Kazarkin? These warriors are the elite of the elite, and they get a stunning kit to match their fearsome reputation. I actually have a single metal Kazarkin, and they're pretty cool models, but I wonder if they're gonna step on the toes a little bit of the Astra Militarum. No, that's the name of the regular guys. The Militarum Tempestus. Because the Militarum Tempestus and the Militarum Tempestus Scions they use like the same gun, like the hotshot Laz and the, the long Laz and stuff. Not the long Laz, that's a different thing, but the hotshot Laz guns. I mean, they're elite troopers who wear a little bit better armor and carry a little bit better Laz guns. And here we've got guys in a little bit better armor carrying a little bit better Laz guns who are a little bit better than the normal Imperial Guard. It'll be interesting to see exactly how they fit in. Will they have different rules? How will their rules differ? Are they gonna be that different? I don't know, but I think that these guys look really good. Honestly, I think these guys might look a little better than the Tempestus Scions. The Tempestus Scions have a little bit of a different look. These guys are very, very future military Starship Troopers, where the other guys are a little bit more like, not Roman, but they have, they have a much, their design aesthetic is kind of like from an older era, a little bit Art Nouveau. Their chest piece looks a little bit like a medieval suit of armor. And so, I don't know, it'll depend. Boy, that's also, it's also a really interesting base they've got. It's just an, a flat base with like seven grains of sand on it. It's a little bizarre. I don't know what's going on there. I know they did a little bit similar stuff with some of the Blackstone Fortress minis, but the Blackstone Fortress kind of made sense because it's like perfect, unbelievably flat Blackstone with just a little bit of crumbs from like the, just the damaged infrastructure. I don't know, very odd. But I really like the Kazakin, I think it's cool, and I can't wait to see what is done with them. Also, a surprisingly really, really tight paint job for Games Workshop. I feel like they finally found their flow of how well they allow the painters to paint things. And so, you know, faces are always a little bit rough, but like in general, everything is Games Workshop, base coat, wash, highlights. But this guy is really, really good with some very, very striking edge highlights. And after the Kazarkin, we have the new Sentinel. 
And as soon as I saw that blurry ass image of a sentinel, my my heart rate started to go up because I love the old Sentinels. I love them so much. I think that they're one of the best kids games workshop has ever made. And I was kind of surprised to see a new Sentinel kit and a little frustrated. I mean, it's just such a good kit. I don't know if it needed an update, but now seeing a nice high res images of the new Sentinel. The new one looks very good. It looks the same as the old one, but just with some minor modifications that actually kind of help. I do like the armor on the legs in a perfect world because there's the scout sentinel and the armored sentinel in a perfect world. You don't glue the armor pieces onto the legs of the scout sentinel and you just put those on for the armored sentinel. I bet. I don't know. It's really hard to see in that blurry image. We haven't seen a good high res image of the scout sentinel. So you know what? I'm just going to say that the armor on the legs isn't there in the scout sentinel and it's perfect exactly how I would want it to be. But I think this looks really, really good. I like the I like the cockpit. I like that it still kind of looks like a head where the old one is a little bit more angular and flat. This one has a curve in the front of it, and I really like it. I also like that it kind of has like a car exhaust just kind of sticking out the top. I mean, it just looks like it was a tiny, tiny bit more thought out than the old Sentinel, which is good. It looks like the front is a real cockpit and then the back half of it really is like engines and all of the machines that are used to keep this thing running. I like it a lot. It's a it's a good and uh, I, it's really nice of Games Workshop to bring it in at the same twenty five dollars that the old Sentinel is. It was really cool of Games Workshop to do that. They didn't have to, but uh, <sighs> no, I'm joking. It'll probably we'll probably see this pupper come in at like fifty dollars or maybe even sixty dollars like some of the new Space Marine small to medium vehicles. Um, hopefully not. Or maybe they'll do it as like a double kit. Like you get two Sentinel walkers. I don't know. Once again, this, <sighs> the frustrating thing about Games Workshop, they show it off and then weeks or months go by and then it finally comes out. And so right now, all I'm working with is it's green and pretty cool looking and I don't know nothing else. Oh, Games Workshop. I like it though. It's grown on me. I might though, because I love how the old Sentinel looks and I feel like the old Sentinel fits better in a Gene Stealer cult army where everything should be a little bit worse. I feel like the old Sentinel is perfect for the Gene Stealer cult. So either either they'll keep them both around, which I doubt, or uh, maybe I'll just go ahead and buy up some of the last remaining of the old Sentinel so that I have I can have three armored and three scout for my Gene Stealer cult and then it'll be I'll have everything I want. And if I ever decide to actually do a Imperial Guard army, I think I would want the new one because the new one does look much better. I just I think it has a, a, a cooler, cleaner aesthetic and the armor on the legs actually makes sense because if you know, if uh, if Star Wars and Ewoks has taught us anything, it's that the legs are the weak point of Imperial walkers. So it makes sense to have a little armor on there. I really dig it. And one one tiny little thing that probably nobody else cared about, but I really like is it has window viewports that are clear. Like here, they're painted like glass with a little bit of a blue shimmer. But I really like that they seem to be pretty much flush with the outside of the walker, which is so nice when it comes to painting, because often we'll have things that have, you know, sunken eye lenses or sunken viewports. And you want them to glow because it's sci fi and glowy, you know, the, having those parts glow looks really, really cool. So you paint it glowing and then you put it on the shelf and it's literally in shadow and you can't tell that you painted it with super bright paint. But when it's flush, you can paint that br a bright, bright color and the light is actually going to be able to hit it and reflect and it'll look like it's glowing. So I really like the decision to have that just be flush as opposed to a literal hole or a recessed, just a recessed thing I the, you see that all the time on the dreadnoughts. Uh, in fact, I actually. On this dreadnought, I actually it had a recessed. It might have just been an actual hole, but I wanted it to glow because that's the eye of the dreadnought. And so I actually filled it in with green stuff so that it's flush. And then I painted it like there's a hole with light coming out of the hole. And I think it looks way better than just a hole. So that was my long rant about holes and how I like Games Workshop to do holes.
But enough about holes. Back to the leaks. We have seen a leaked image of the new Land Raider Proteus, the plastic one that's going to be coming to 30K. And I think it looks really good. It looks basically identical to the old resin ones that Forge World made. And so basically plastic is a million times better than resin for vehicles in like infantry. I still think it makes a lot of sense to have like the heroes and characters in resin because resin will give you smaller, finer details than plastic will. I mean, part of it just has to do with like resin molds are soft and can kind of like peel away from the figure, leaving it perfect where uh, plastic injection molding, you have a rigid, hard metal mold that the thing has to come out, has to be able to come out of easily. That's why the models are cut into so many pieces. So that they all have an easy way to escape from the mold. But plastic is perfect for this, the Land Raider Proteus. The only thing that has me a tiny bit confused is Forge World sells two Land Raider Proteuses, the Land Raider Proteus and the Armored Land Raider Proteus. And the Armored one looks a little bit different. It has different sponsons and a different kind of face to it. But this plastic leaked image has the front of the Armored Land Raider Proteus, but the side sponsons of the normal Proteus. And I mean, I'm sure this isn't a mistake. This looks like a, they took a photo um, out of a codex? I don't quite know what this looks like a leaked photo from, but maybe box art, but they don't do fuzzy blue box art. Very strange, but uh, yeah, so it's weird. It's weird that it seems to be a kit bashing of the two different armor designs. It's possible that like they just decided to do away with the regular Land Raider Proteus and have the armored Proteus be the standard. I think that'd probably be fine. Uh, I like it though. I think it looks really neat. And I just like the Land Raider Proteus in general because it shows that Games Workshop never really lets anything go. Like if they have a design or a model or an idea, they never really just drop it. They always retcon it or change it or modify it in some way to bring it back into the the proper modern lore of 40K. Because this, you know, this pupper was from back in the days of Rogue Trader and nothing but Beaky Marines. And so, you know, instead of just saying, well, Marines don't look like that anymore and the Land Raider doesn't look like that anymore, that Land Raider, you know, those Land Raiders that existed that people saw, you know, back in the late 80s, early 90s, though, you know, those Land Raiders that people saw were actually just a different mark of Land Raider. There's different types of Land Raiders and that's just a type of Land Raider. And those Beaky Marines were not actually the normal Space Marines, but they were all Mark Space Marines wearing Mark VI armor. And so nothing is ever retconned. Nothing is ever truly wrong. You just might be not have all of the information. I think it's really... It's really a neat thing that Games Workshop does where it keeps everything very kind of consistent and good. I really like it. I like the Land Raider Proteus. And I could totally see this because the old one was what, $130, $140? The plastic one, I bet you the plastic one comes in. Ooh, hmm, now I'm guessing prices. Because I was about to say, I bet it comes in at $100 just like the current Land Raiders, but the smaller tank they just released was like a hundred and was it one, two, three dollars? It was over, it was a little bit over a hundred dollars. And so I wonder if this is also going to be a little bit over a hundred dollars. I hope it's not because it'd be really cool if people kind of had the option, which Land Raider they want. Do they want this Land Raider or do they want the classic Land Raider, like the Land Raider Redeemer, Crusader, that variant. So I hope that uh, it costs less, but who knows? It'll probably cost more. Again, taking a look at that leaked image. It looks like a leaked image, if you know what I mean. Games Workshop, I might be on to you. Might have to, have to do a little bit of investigating. And speaking of investigating, feel free to investigate our Patreon. Over there, we have a Minute of the Month Club. We also have tons and tons of super cool terrain STLs hosted by Comics, Games, and Things. We have one extra episode of Eon's Battle a week, model critique videos, a live hobby hangout every Friday, and more. This is the best way to support us. So head on over to Patreon to get even more Eon's Battle. We also have merch linked in the description. I really kind of want to make that Games Workshop leaked image video, so maybe I'm just going to go and do that. Bye!